there is only one truth. Every level of understanding can be argued coherently. Every stage of life is true within its own limits. But the perfection of understanding, practice and sacrifice is realised only in the seventh stage of life. Therefore, all knowledge, all order and all attainments must yield to the wisdom of perfection, the wisdom of all adepts in the seventh stage. There is absolute bliss. The absolute person or self who is infinitely radiant, whose radiance pervades all conditions that arise as possible experience. That radiance is itself unchanging, but all of the phenomena of experience, all of the phenomena of the realm of nature, are the changes, the superficial and unnecessary modifications of this all-pervading radiance, which is supremely blissful. Therefore, if we can awaken from our sense of identification with the body-mind and be submitted into that current of radiance, and if we can realise our identity with that true self or consciousness, then we may enjoy perfect and eternal bliss. There is only one truth, but there are two ways to realise it. Truth may be realised directly and absolutely, or it may be realised gradually. The disposition of God realisation involves a single intuition or turnabout in our consciousness, in which we are moved to become a sacrifice through surrender or love communion with the Divine. But there are two paths whereby we become perfectly absorbed in the Divine. One is sudden or direct, and the other is circuitous. The gradual path of, in, of enlightenment is a way of moving through the levels of phenomena, through the chain of creation, ultimately to realise the divine condition, but in general, not in this lifetime. It is a matter of progressing by stages, first transcending this gross birth of the covered soul, and then moving on to transcend the subtle births of the soul. This roundabout path, this great way of return, involves first of all hearing the argument about our ultimate destiny, and then taking up a life of renunciation. Through strategic renunciation, attention is turned away from the gross realm of possibility into the life current of the body-mind, and then the tension is moved via that current along the spinal line toward the internal brain centres and into the subtle conditions of the mind. This is the path of mystics and yogis. There are many versions of this approach to enlightenment, but they are all essentially a matter of placing the attention in the internal life current of the body-mind, moving it upwards bypassing the lower or gross bodily phenomena and fixing attention in the various regions of the brain core. That is, attention is maintained at the position of the brain core, which is also named the third eye and the Arjuna Chakra. It is the position of the higher or subtle mind, and from this position the various lokas or realms of subtle experience or subtle mind, may be viewed or otherwise visited and known. The merging of attention and the life current in the experiential phenomena of the brain core is not God realization. It is interpreted as such by mystics and yogas, but in fact it is simply a disposition in the tendency of the body-mind to move away from the gross level of phenomena and toward the mental or subtle psychic states. A yogi who has fixed his life force and attention in the brain-mind has not realised God or the self. He has transcended the grosser elements while alive. But after death, 
he moves into other births in the subtle dimensions of the realm of nature. His attention lies in the spectrum of subtle possibility. Therefore, he moves into subtle forms in higher and subtler worlds of experience. Thus, it is not self-realization that occurs when the attention is placed in the life current at the brain core. Rather, it is experiential transcendence, transcendence of the lower spectrum of the possibilities of experience. Independent and mysterious experience still lies in the future for such an individual. He has not been liberated into self-realization or true card realization. He is still moving toward it. The direct way or sudden path of enlightenment, the way of God or the way of truth, has nothing whatever to do with the destinies of attention, the destinies of the ego or the separated consciousness. It is the way of insight into the very gesture of attention itself. It is the way of engaging in the natural process of God communion, which is surrender of attention. The sudden way is not the manipulation of attention in gross or subtle levels of experience, but the surrender of attention itself at its root, which is in the heart. Once this process has been realized perfectly, then the heart itself is realized to be the infinite, the absolute, the perfect divine. In that realization, there is absolutely no necessity whatsoever to any experience. The present life or, or body-mind continues its turn, and it is lived in the natural way that is appropriate for one who lives in communion with God. But it does not contain within it the seed of his own repetition. Therefore, at death, there is no migration. The body-mind is returned to the elements high and low, and the consciousness is withdrawn from the realms of attention, just as the life force is withdrawn at death from the physical body. Thus, the conscious being is absorbed in the Absolute. In the case of the mystic or the yogi, however, however, the attention remains vagrant at death. It is still moving toward phenomena. Therefore, when such an individual dies, he migrates. He leaves with the life. He leaves with the life current through the mental region of the eyes, or with the feeling of attention rising through the top of the head. Therefore, the soul follows attention or the mind into the higher worlds of experience. It is only the true devotee, the one who is oriented to God rather than to the futures of attention, who transcends all possibility. He transcends all the realms of phenomena, not by acts of will or acts of attention toward objects and possibility, but through awakening to the source of attention, the true condition of consciousness. Thus, the true devotee realises the condition in which experience is not necessary. Attention or mind is transformed at the heart and the bodily life current, liberated from all bondage to the mind or the tendencies of attention toward experience in the body-mind, is released into the all-pervading radiance by the upper terminal of the brain, above the brain core, and in all directions to infinity. As long as you are attached to the mind and body, you must keep these states active. You must continue to have experiences in order to give yourself a sense of existence. If they tend to slow down, or if they tend not to have enough newness to them so that you become bored, then you feel uncomfortable and threatened. And when the body is dying, you feel terrified because you imagine that you need the body and its associations in order to exist and to be blissful. Truly, 
your condition is inherently blissful in God. No experiences of which we may speak are necessarily associated with it. It is an absolute condition in which there is no independent gesture of consciousness, but only simple absorption in the infinite blissfulness of God. The devotee on the direct path to enlightenment is awakened by the teaching of the spiritual master, and he enters into a natural order of life in which he transcends all of the urges toward experience subtle and gross, mental and physical. He transcends the body-mind altogether. He does not go up or down by tendency, but rather he becomes absorbed at the heart and by the heart in the absolute divine who is all-pervading and transcendental. And when the eyes of the heart open and the devotee is identical to the true self, then all the phenomena that arise are seen to be only modifications of that radiant self with which the devotee is identical. There is no necessity to the world, then. It is simply a temporary condition created by past associations, and when it has fulfilled its term, it ceases to be. Thus, at death, the devotee does not go up or down or in or out. He is not changed in that moment, but he simply abides in the bliss of God realization. He is translated into the domain of that bliss absolutely, without associations with phenomena that tend to distract and literally dishearten him. The way of divine ignorance is the communication of this sudden and most direct way. In this way, these mechanisms by which the yogis and mystics ascend into subtle planes of the mind are inspected recognized, understood, and transcended, but not exploited. It is intended to be a brief process. The way of yoga or mysticism takes many lifetimes, but the process in the way of divine ignorance is radical. Therefore, it is not intended that you spend your entire life moving through the stages of inspection. The stages of practice in this way are not stages of the perfection of any experiential condition. They are stages of responsibility for the conversion of consciousness in which a natural order is established in the psychophysical being. That order is without urgency, without self-exploitation, and the individual rests more and more profoundly in surrender into the all-pervading current rather than the internal current of the body-mind and the very consciousness that eternally transcends the body-mind. Whatever you have not transcended, you must fulfil. That is the law. Merely to have come into the company of the spiritual master during your lifetime does not mean that you can escape all possibilities. You must live this way, you must fulfil the way in literal transcendence of the possibilities of experience. You must enter into the blessedness of God-realisation while alive. Otherwise, you will tend toward human or somewhat higher than human destinies after this life. If any tendencies remain toward anything other than communion with the Absolute, then those tendencies will be fulfilled in experience in the future. To be absorbed in communion with the Absolute is not what is difficult. What is difficult is to move attention up and to force it into subtle realms, separating yourself from the natural bodily attention. That is difficult. Arranging a benign future in the midst of experience, controlling your attention to yield beautiful destinies, that is difficult. To be a saint or a yogi is difficult. It involves a great deal of self-manipulative effort and a creative capacity for delusion. The way of God-realisation is the way beyond illusions, the way beyond phenomena of all kinds, in which there is no identification with the cycle of attention, 
that moves out of the condition of pure consciousness. There is no identification with the body, with the mind, with phenomena of any kind. There is natural, very simple and very direct communion with the Absolute. It is perfect. It is not difficult. Thus, it is said that there is no good reason to do what is necessary to get to heaven any more than there is any good reason to exploit yourself on earth. The only way whereby we are liberated is to be a sacrifice in love communion with the Absolute God, who is all-pervading, who is the infinite energy, and who is transcendentally present as the very self or condition of our consciousness. If we will practice that sacrifice, then we are liberated from our illusions, from our self-possession, from our urges toward the fulfilment of experience and we cease to migrate from life to death to life through changes but rather we are entered into the divine domain the absolute perfection of bliss which may not be described from the point of view of psychophysical existence or identification with the body-mind that condition far exceeds by infinite multiplications of itself beyond infinity the blessedness and blissfulness that may be realized through any satisfaction in human form. And we may be a sacrifice into that realization of God even while living in a human form. It is not necessary to have a higher form because the human form is structured in perfect intimacy with the matrix of the universe. The living divine is manifested at the heart, so we need not go up into a more subtle body in order to make this sacrifice. In the process of this way of truth, we become a voluntary and spontaneous sacrifice in which there is no holding on to any phenomenon whatsoever, no holding on to the body and its possibilities, no holding on to the breath, no holding on to manifest existence or to birth, no resistance of death, no reaction to the world, no reaction to the cycle of phenomena and inevitable changes. There is no holding on to thinking, no holding on to mind, no holding on to hopes for subtle distractions, no holding on to any mystical efforts towards sublime circumstances. There is simple, natural absorption in the divine reality, not effort, not urge, not any gesture of attention, but simply absorption itself. In that absorption, or dissolution of attention, all phenomena become unnecessary, and their seed, which is a gesture of attention, is transformed in God realization. The conscious being is not destroyed, it realizes its condition in truth, which is not the inward being of the body mind, but the absolute divine, the independent soul realizes that condition only through its own sacrifice, its release from its own gesture of attention and association with phenomena. Only in that utter transcendence of the urge toward experience does the atomic soul realize that it exists at infinity.